Hello, this is the Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review this Kami 2109. Let's start with the wrist check. I'm wearing this R Lanch 305, and Greg was wearing my Giga Diddy GY16104. Greg said that Admiral Akbar was in the hospital. A giant white hyperspace whale bit off his right leg. Princess Leia warned Akbar about letting the loss of his leg give him an unhealthy desire to hunt down and kill the white whale. He said, can I at least spit my last breath man out of him? Okay, let's take a look at the watch. The watch did not come in a box. This is the Skimi. They seldom ever do. And this was a $12 watch and they seldom ever do. But here it is in all its glory. I've had many Skimis on my channel. Overall, I've been fairly pleased with the brand, thinking that they are pretty good watches for the money. But at these prices, there's bound to be a few turkeys in the bunch, and I think we found one with the 2109. The 2109 looks quite a bit like a moon swatch, with the analog subdials replaced with the digital display, but that is not the cause of my disappointment. I knew the digital display when I ordered the watch, and I was quite satisfied with the digital display. What I wasn't expecting was the flimsy plastic case and bracelet. Yes, I know at this price, this watch is going to be plastic, but not all plastics are created equal, and the plastic case crown and pushers give me no confidence or feeling of durability. I guess many people were disappointed with the build and quality of their moon swatches, so Skimi was able to reproduce that disappointment on a $12 watch. There are way too many colorways to list, so instead I'll just put up a picture. No, these do not replicate the many moon swatch colors. The watch is 43.5 millimeters if you measure at the bezel, but a full 46 millimeters if you measure at the case. So this is a fairly big watch. It's 52.9 millimeters lug to lug if you measure here, but these are fixed protruding end links. So it's much longer than that. It's 14.4 millimeters thick, has a 22 millimeter lug width, and only weighs 56 grams on the supply plastic bracelet. The bezel is a plastic tachymeter, and why does it have a tachymeter? Because a moon swatch has a tachymeter. That's the only reason it's a completely useless tachymeter, because there is no chronograph hand to point to. And even if it had a small second chronograph, you could at least take the position of the small second and move it to the tachymeter, but that's not the case here. So it's completely useless. Strictly decorative. Then we have the dial. The dial is a flat color with no sunburst effect. Then we have the Skimi name up top and the 2109 model number. Then on the left it says three time because you can track three times. And then on the right it says WR 50 meters. So you get 50 meters water resistance. Then we have the indices. They are not loomed and they are just thin strips of metal. And we have the two little dots next to the 12, which is a Omega style. And then we have the hands. The hands are loomed and the loom is not great, but you don't really need loom because you have a backlight. But of course the backlight just lights up the three sub dials. It does not light up the hands. So depending where the hands are, you might not be able to see them without the loom. And if you have your watch where the hands are a different time than the sub dials, then you want to see the hands. And sometimes you, if it's dark enough, you can make out where they are if the loom is faded just by the backlight. But it just all depends. Then we have the three sub dials. Let's get them out of the way. Let's get the hands out of the way. All right, the left sub dial is the time. It says 624 with a P for the PM. You can set it for 24 hour mode, but there is no 24 hour quick toggle. You have to go to the settings to do that. Then on the right top is the day of the month. And the bottom is the counting, is the running seconds, and it's also the day of the week. And right now you can see that it's Monday. 
Then you have the fence post minute in our hand and a spear tip second hand. And they are loomed. The loom's not god awful, but it's not good either. I'll show you later. This is not a synchronized watch. The minute the analog hands are not synchronized with the digital, thus we have a crown. This is a push pull crown. And the action's kind of loose. And if you have the crown out, the, the hand will move on you. And so when you go to set it in, you will get that annoying minute hand jump. And sometimes when you hold it, you can do it without the jump. But it's, it's annoying. It's just, I hate that. That's the worst part about cheap quartz watches is the annoying minute hand jump. Because the nice thing about quartz watches is at least they're accurate. But if you can't set them accurately, who cares? Then when you press this pusher, it puts you into stopwatch mode. Then it puts you into alarm mode. Then it puts you into countdown timer mode. And then it puts you into second time mode. Now on the second time, you can only set the hour. You can't set the minutes or the seconds. So if you do have a second time, you can't track a time zone that where they do a half hour daylight savings. That's different. You can only you can only change the hour. But personally, I don't even know what countries do that. I know there's a few, but I will never go there. To set the watch when you're in time mode, Go ahead and press this button and then the seconds start counting. Press the top one here on the right and it resets the seconds. When you press this one, then it toggles it over to the hours, then the minutes, then the day of the, then the month, then the day of the month, and then the day of the week, and then whether or not it's 12 hour or 24 hour, And that's it. You do not have a year. And thus you do not have a perpetual calendar. And so it does not handle leap year. And this is a leap year. So when it gets to the 29th, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to handle leap year myself. Because it doesn't know about leap year. The crown and the pushers are made of the same plastic as the case. The case plastic is called, is an ABS plastic. And when you feel it, it just feels cheap. It feels light. I don't know how long these pushers are going to last. Every time I pull the crown out, I think I'm going to break it. I don't think it's a very good plastic at all. It doesn't feel sturdy. It feels really cheap. And then we have a flat plastic crystal also. This is not mineral glass. It's a plastic. Then we do have a steel case back. It does say 50 meters water resistant gives the model number and then gives the battery code which is a CR 2016 and it's held on by four tiny Phillips screws like most watches in this price range in this type of watch I don't know the movement it doesn't say in the ad and I didn't feel like taking the case back off um, Usually because it's kind of pointless anyway. I probably wouldn't know. I went over the features of the movement. And that's all you really need to know. Then we have the bracelet. The bracelet. If the case is ABS plastic. The bracelet is. They say it's TPU plastic. Which is thermal polyurethane. And it feels really cheap too. 
it just feels like something that's going to break on you. I don't like it. It gives me no confidence whatsoever. And it's held, the links are held in with push pins, but I didn't remove any links to fit on my seven and a half inch wrist. So I don't know how well they come in and out. And I didn't feel like pushing them out because I didn't want to break the thing anyway. Then we have a butterfly clasp. It's bi-directional. You don't have to close it in a certain direction. But if you look at the clasp, you can't change it. So it would be nice if you could have put a more traditional clasp on here, which would make the bracelet longer since the bracelet's too short. But you can't do that. Here is the watch at my seven and a half inch wrist. This is a big watch, but it's so light, you can hardly tell it's on. It's only 55 grams, so it's not heavy at all. And so it's a little bit loose, but you can't really tell because it's so light. And if I remove a link, it'll be way too, much, too tight. And once again, I remove no links. So if your wrist is bigger than mine, you will not be able to wear it on the bracelet. And because of these end links, you're going to have quite a big gap if you put it on a strap. And I don't know how difficult it is to get these end links off or not. Here we are in the loom room. This watch has a backlight, but unlike some digital analog watches that light up the whole dial, it only shows the subdials. So you need loom to read the analog hands. As we speed up the time, we see that the hands aren't great, but I've seen a lot worse. The second hand is the first to go. Then the minute hand lasts a little bit longer. Then the hour hand is almost gone. And nothing else on the watch is loomed. What do I like about this watch? Well, it's very comfortable because it's so light. It does have a full featured digital movement, although it doesn't do time zones or anything like that. And it's kind of nice looking. What are my gripes and groans? Cheap plastic case, bracelet, and pushers. And crown. The bracelet is too short for any wrist bigger than mine. The hands are not synchronized with the movement. And it has a tacky meter just for show. Do I recommend this watch? No, this watch just feels cheap. But not in the good way. On other skimmies, I thought it was fun having a watch that did so much for so little money. But this one just feels like a trinket. So I do not recommend the watch. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Skimmy 2109. And I will be back with an unboxing. I got some stuff coming from AliExpress tomorrow. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. And if you like this watch, despite my uh, not recommending it, be sure to buy it through my affiliate link and I will get a tiny commission. And uh, be sure to check out my membership if you want to participate in the Member's Choice Watch. Bye.